Hi, my name is Loretta Byrne, and I am a nurse, and I am also the project manager of Research Match. And I'm here today to talk to you about the value of being part of a research study and where you can start and what you should ask. I'm also an educator at Vanderbilt University Medical Center. And again, I am part of the project, which is a nonprofit project called researchmatch.org. Uh, I have conducted many research studies um, as part of clinical pharmacology at Vanderbilt for 12 years, and I've been a nurse since the 1980s. So today I'd like to talk to you about research studies. Have you ever wondered what it's like to take part in a research study? or how you would find research studies to participate in? Well, let's talk about that. First of all, you are the most valuable part of research. Every one of us who takes part in a research study, and I've done so myself, is really helping to advance science. There are many types of research studies to be a part of, and there is a study for for just about everybody. It doesn't matter if you're healthy or if you have a health condition, there's a study that needs you. The more people who take part and means that the faster we can find um, better ways to improve the lives of people by discovering treatments and methods to prevent disorders. So today we're going to talk about that and what it's like to be in a study what you should ask if you're in a study or before joining a study and where you can find more information. Okay, so let's think about research. And, and I'd like to tell you that, you know, almost every drug that's on, on the market and available at a drugstore or at a grocery store, um, like Tylenol, or maybe your doctor prescribes an antibiotic or even an aspirin, was taken by somebody for the very first time. And that person may have been the doctor who was developing that antibiotic, but that person and the people that took it after that first person were all volunteers. And so can you imagine how important they are and, 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 and understand the importance of, the, of that? Um, and just how wonderful that is that we have all these antibiotics available to us when we're sick. But the process from the start of developing that antibiotic in a laboratory, or even like the vaccines that are out now for, for COVID-19, the process of starting that research in the lab and then developing it into um, a research study and involving the volunteers and finding out the information um, from the studies, on average takes 13 to 20 years. So if you're waiting for a drug to help you with your anxiety or your depression, it could be years before another new drug comes on the market. So what's the holdup? Well, 19% of studies were closed early in a review that was done of all studies going on in around 2015. 19% of them were closed early because they could not enroll enough volunteers. And as many as 86% of studies don't find enough volunteers within their specific time period for the study. So why don't people participate, right? Well, you know, when you think about it, first of all, most people don't even know that research studies are going on, right? They don't even know where to start. Uh, even though I was a nurse, I didn't realize that there were studies going on in my area. Um, so until you start to hear about them and, and think, mm, would I want to do that? Is that interesting? Um, am I needed? Am I valued? You, you really don't seek them out. You have to be told about them. You have to find out more information. And then also a lot of us are nervous or unsure about being in a research study. Sometimes, um, you know, we don't know where to begin. So let's talk about that. First of all, I'd like to tell you that there's many types of research. Some research is looking to understand the disease by studying the patterns in a group of people or the causes and effects of living a certain way within a group of people. Others improve the understanding um, of human behavior, maybe through surveys, telephone interviews, and how your behavior relates to whether you have a health condition or a disease. Other types of studies look at how people access healthcare and health providers. And then some studies 
are more like clinical research studies and they test the effects of something like an existing treatment, maybe aspirin or Tylenol, and then, or they might be looking for something new, like a new drug or testing a drug against you know, the effects of a new drug versus how an old drug works. So that type of study is called a clinical research study. Clinical research studies are very well planned. They have a lot of oversight and they must meet very high standards for safety. These studies are usually supervised by a doctor. And these studies look at new ways to prevent disease, detect disease or treat disease. We might look again at those new drugs or combinations of drugs, maybe new ways of doing surgery, new ways of using existing treatments like Tylenol or aspirin or something for anxiety, new ways to change behaviors to improve health. Or maybe they're looking at new ways to improve the quality of life for people. So I've taken part in research studies and I'd like to share some common things that might happen if you're in a research study. First of all, you'll usually come into a facility. It might be a medical center, a hospital, um, or, or someplace that does the research study, and you'll meet the clinical research team. Um, sometimes you meet the main doctor in charge, and that's that person is called a principal investigator, and they usually have planned the study and lead the study. But did you know that sometimes patients help to design a study? And they can help to design what a study is looking at and what a study entails. You'll also meet the research coordinator and the coordinator coordinates the study activities. And they're your main contact um, during your participation. So before you volunteer, uh, I am going to encourage you uh, to bring a list of questions with you so that you get the information you need so that you're not as nervous and you can feel more sure about joining and about your decision to join. So what questions should you ask? Okay, so you should understand what is the purpose of this study? What are you looking for? Why are you doing it? Who's in charge? Are there any risks for me to be in this study? How will I benefit or will I get any benefit from being in this study? Will I still be able to see my own doctor? And what if I want to stop being in the study? Is there a chance I will get a, something called a placebo? And you should understand what that means and they should explain that to you. A placebo is a pill or something like a pill. Maybe it's a liquid, but it's basically just made out of sugar. Um, so you might be thinking you're taking a medicine, but you're just taking a placebo. Um, but they're doing that for a reason, and you should ask about why they're doing that. You should understand how long you will need to be in the study, how long the study will last. You can ask, and you should be told if you um, are going to be paid or compensated for your time, uh, and if you can stay on your own treatment while you're in the study. And you should also know how your privacy is protected. So not all studies are the same, but in general, studies have common um, things about them. So in the studies that I have conducted and that I have taken part in as a volunteer, they have looked like this. First, there was a screening visit. So I came in and the study team informed me about the study. And then they um, went through the, all the study and answered my questions. And then I signed a consent. Um, so I agreed to be in the study and I got a copy of that. And then the team and I decided if I qualified to be in the study. So just because I joined didn't mean I would qualify. Um, I had to be a certain age and a certain weight and be a certain, um, a certain, I had to have a certain health condition. But once I was in the study, I took part in study visits. I came into a clinical research center at the hospital and then I had to be on a diet and I had to take a pill every day. But sometimes studies involve um, taking surveys or keeping a diary or being asked to change how you live your life, like maybe exercising more or something like that. Um, research could be added to the care or treatment you are already getting. 
Uh, so in other words, maybe you're asked to take a drug, but you can continue on the care or treatment that you're already getting. Like you can stay on the medicine you're already taking. So you should ask and find out about that. Then you'll be asked to follow the procedures. Um, you might have a study visit, but then you go home and you follow the study procedures. So you continue to take uh, the medicine every day or something like that, or you stay on the diet, or you follow up with their phone calls. Um, but you'll tell the team if you change your medication or if you stop taking it or you change your lifestyle, and you can always call the team whenever you have a question, okay? Um, but the team needs to stay in touch with you. So if you're not taking part in the study, like you've decided you don't like it, you need to let them know so that they can take you off the study. You will finally have your final visit and you can ask for copies of your results. You can ask for information uh, that they learned about you. And again, you should understand if you're going to be compensated. So again, what you could expect when you take part in a research study, to have the purpose of the study explained to you, to be treated with respect, you'll be given enough time to decide whether you wanna take part or not, and you'll be given a description of any risks or discomforts or anything inconvenient that might happen, like you have to come in for visits, things like that. Um, you'll be given a description of any benefits that are reasonably expected, or you should be told whether there are no benefits at all. You'll be encouraged to ask questions. You'll be told how to contact the study team, like you'll get their email or their phone number, and you'll be told about why you may be withdrawn or you should be told that you can withdraw at any time, okay? You'll be told that you can decide whether to participate in the research study without any pressure. You can take as long as you want to decide and there's absolutely no pressure to stay in a study at any time. And again, you'll be given a signed copy of that consent form, okay? And I want you to hang on to it because that'll have all the directions in there and it'll have phone numbers and it'll have a list of all those things that you're going to do as part of the study. So sometimes there are special considerations like if um, researchers are looking at uh, children. So in pediatric studies, those studies require that the parents sign the consent and the child agrees to be in the study too. Sometimes studies um, pay for the medication that you're taking, they almost always do. And they'll also pay for any tests or lab work that you have done. Some studies will continue to provide the medication for patients or volunteers who respond well after the study ends, but not every study does that. So you need to ask about that. So where can you find out about research opportunities? Let's talk about that for a minute. Well, the Anxiety and Depression Association of America does list some study information on their website, um, including Research Match, which is the project that I work on. Um, Research Match is a nonprofit website and project across the United States that brings together two groups of people, researchers who want to conduct studies and need those volunteers, and people who want to volunteer and are looking for studies. So Research Match is one place to find study opportunities. Also a website called Trials Today, or you could ask your doctor, you could find information at your local medical center, or you can look at another website called clinicaltrials.gov, which is hosted by the National Institutes of Health. This is the homepage of Research Match. I just want to talk about this for a minute. Uh, Research Match, you can see, is in English and Spanish. Um, we are funded by the National Institutes of Health in order to create this opportunity to find out about research studies. Uh, since 2010, over 152,000 people have registered as a volunteer and over 9,000 researchers are using Research Match to find volunteers for their studies. About 50,000 to 60,000 people have been enrolled in clinical research uh, since we began Research Match. So we're really helping to get people connected. There's a lot of variety of studies on research match. It's not just about anxiety research or research on depression. 
but everyone can make a difference, whether you're healthy or not, okay? So there are studies on memory loss, dementia, diabetes, pre-diabetes, high blood pressure and heart problems, studies about hearing loss, mobility problems, arthritis, kidney problems. Uh, and then there's other studies that study prevention, like studies on exercise or vaccines or changes in diet. So if you'd like to find out more about Research Match, you go to researchmatch.org, www.researchmatch.org, and you sign up as a volunteer. Um, it is free and there's no obligation to ever take part in the study. Uh, you join and tell us a little bit about yourself and whether you have certain health conditions or not. You don't have to share your health or medication information if you don't want to. Um, and then you're emailed by Research Match, and the emails look like this. And you're emailed information about researchers and their studies. And if it's interesting to you, you say, yes, I'm interested. And then you'll be releasing your email and phone number to the researchers. So the researchers don't have information on ways to contact you until you say yes. You have control over releasing your contact information to them. So in summary, you are the most valuable part of research. And there are many types of research studies for many different types of people. There are people who take part in research um, and, and they're so valuable because they're helping us advance medical discoveries. And the faster we find better ways to improve the lives of people through, through research, the faster we can make new interventions, new treatments, and new ways to prevent disease. Understand what will happen uh, and how it might affect you if you're in a study. Um, and remember that you can always stop being in a study at any time, even if it's the last day of that study, you can stop. And remember to ask questions and ask for help um, because uh, everybody needs help getting started. Um, we, we don't know where to begin until we start to ask and somebody says, oh, I know where you can go. And one of those places is on the Anxiety and Depressions website and also at researchmatch.org. So thank you for listening and I value very much.